One, one thing that I that I'm doing a little different as far as OMAD goes. Um, when we have special things going on like that, um, the, the, I, I don't know if you're probably aware, but but the longer you fast, the better the better it is. You can go up to four days or five days or something, and and it's like a a, a 48 hour fast is better than yeah. 24 hours. Yeah. Um, but it's like for those special occasions like that where we were we were planning on dinner and stuff um i decided I, i'd go ahead and skip breakfast in the morning and have dinner with them at, at five o'clock or six o'clock and at that point i've been doing a 33 hour fast and then just the next day drop back right back into um eating breakfast or having the normal breakfast and back into omad yeah yeah, I, 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 I never went over a day. I, I, I don't. I, 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 the way I saw it is that I didn't want to, because uh, you know, muscle is is important in, in to fight mm -hmm. inflammation, and uh, after you go after the twenty four hour period, that's when your body starts using your muscle as fuel. So yeah. it. it that's why I always got in my mind. I didn't ever want to extend beyond uh, beyond 24 hours. Yeah, no, I've I've been watching quite a bit on on fasting and and uh, the benefits beyond inflammation reduction that are tremendous. And so so yeah, I think that's that's going to be my standard mode. Is is if we've got something big going on, I'm shooting for like once a month or something. To, to, to do the extended fast. Yeah, I mean, once a month, that's not, that's not gonna no. be terrible, you know, no. it's fine. Yeah. But yeah, you just don't want, you don't wanna, cause I hear people like going for like, their, you know, three day fast and then they'll do it and then they'll eat and then they'll go another three days. It's like, oh man, that, I, I could never do that. Uh -uh. But, but it's I'm too surprising. Going 33 hours, it's like it's it's no no different than going 24 hours for me. It's no. like really nothing, nothing bothers me, and and it's not like I'm hungry or wait can't wait till till dinner or whatever. It's like it's just it's fine. That is the big misconception people have whenever they hear me. How I you know when they find out that I I don't eat for 24 hours, they're like oh aren't you hungry? I'm like no. Your body, your body turns <laughs> off the hunger. Your body, if, if anything, if you if you want to if you want to stay hungry, then eat every couple hours. Then then you'll really get in the habit of like being hungry over and over and over. But yeah. if you if you just cut it down to once a day, after you know, I I, oh, I don't even get hungry anymore. I I have never felt hungry for years. But no. I mean, that's just that's just the the mode you get in. It is, yeah. I, I it took me probably <laughs> a week or two to get used to it, but then it's like after that, that's the mode I'm in, and it's like yeah. I'm not hungry. Just that's just what I do. Yep. Hey, Angela. Hello. How are you doing today? Oh, hi, I'm good. Yeah, I had a slow start this morning. Uh, is there a story attached to that, or are you just... No, just my husband it? went to the store to pick up our click list, and I kind of forgot we had a Zoom meeting for a minute. And <laughs> realized it, hurried up and got ready, and then he wasn't home to do his computer thing, so I... Oh, well, I yeah. Oh, I know, you don't have any... You don't have a beautiful sunset in your background. No, I don't. <laughs> that's okay. That's fine. Yeah. Well, so how are you doing? How are you doing this week? Doing good, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I had my 19th injection of Casimpta on Thursday. Okay. So, and I actually slept really, really good that night. Uh, do you, are, are, in the past, have you had, uh, is it kind of upset you're sleeping? No, mm, mm No? No, just okay. my normal is to just not get much sleep, but it's mainly because first I got diagnosed with MS, then my husband had a stroke the next year. Oh, and we just yeah, found that... out that he got his job back. So I slept pretty good after my injection. Oh, awesome. And then he starts work again on Monday. 
So yeah, great. That's, that's good, cool. Good, yeah. relaxing information. So, yeah, it was good to get good news for a change. <laughs> yeah, wow. Yeah. So, that's all my news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, One good well, night's sleep and my husband back at work. <laughs> well, did, did, you, did, your, uh, wa- did your watch it and record the sleep? Oh yeah, I recorded the sleep. I got like an 80, let me see. I think it was right at 80 or, or 80 something. Hold on. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's gonna get better. No, it was 89. It was 89. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's really good. Last night went back down to 70, but oh, okay. that was my week. The okay. big high point was the 89. Well, I know it. When I, when I was climbing up, I, I had those times when I had really good night's sleep and then they would drop down back into like seventies or whatever. Right. But then, then it kinda it kinda levels out and you actually get to the point where you it's normal to be in the eighties. Right. And and so and then and then sleep isn't really not that big of an issue. Yeah. Yeah, if I could get into the eighties consistently, that would be really great. Yeah. Well you'll get there. You'll get yeah. there. Yeah, I think having this load of stress off will help tremendously. Yeah. Yeah. For sure, that makes a big difference. Yeah, well, I mean, we've lost his job and his benefits for a year. So hopefully oh, the next big hurdle will be when his benefits kick back in and we have our health insurance back. Oh, geez, yeah. 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 That's cool, that's awesome. Yeah, that was the first time, it only was like for six months or so that we weren't with insurance and it was, First time in my life that I've not had health insurance ever. So that was stressful. Yeah, no doubt. So hopefully that'll be remedied real soon. <laughs> so I a, go ahead, Todd. Well, I, I've got a different sleep thing going on. It's like every once in a while when we have friends over or something, in the evening I'll I'll break um, OMAD and and have whatever snacks and treats or whatever we have and um, last night happened to be one of them where I had uh, like a bunch of blueberries and and some almonds I guess it was and um, my sleep I would think that would that would wreck my sleep but it's my sleep um, went it got substantially better mm. it's like I REM sleep was up by a half hour or an hour. My my deep sleep was up by 30 minutes or so. And it's like I've I've done that, I don't know, maybe once a month, something like that. And it's like three out of four times that I've done that over the over um, that my sleep has gotten better, which seems really strange to me, but but that seems to be the pattern. Yeah. I, I know. Oh, I I I guess it was. It must. It wasn't this past Christmas. It must have been the Christmas before. Uh, I I I broke my OMAD, and I had some. I had because I was like, oh, you know, it's Christmas. I want to celebrate, and so I I went off of OMAD and just you know tried to do like you know Christmas food and stuff, and uh-huh. then that night. It, I had terrible sleep, terrible sleep. And I was like, you know what, that's it, no more. I'm going back to OMAD, I'm never leaving. <laughs> yeah. That's what I keep expecting, but it's, but for whatever reasons, it, it's, my score goes up. Yeah. Yeah, we're, my son's turning 18 this coming Friday, and I won't be partake, you know, partaking in the cake or anything like that. So just his, him and his friends can have the cake and, festivities and I think they're ordering pizza or something but none of it for me so so that means uh, on uh Saturday you're kicking them out right <laughs> no. you know, you know, you're, you're 18 now time no, to get the road <laughs> no he can stay here as long as he wants now his dad oh. he starts talking that way but I don't <laughs> <laughs> you've always got a place with your mom <laughs> Oh, he's a mama's boy. That's what it is. <laughs> well, he's my only child, so I don't know who's more dependent on the other. <laughs> Probably yeah. me. So, yeah. 
Well, it was funny because I was just sitting with mom and dad when they're eating lunch. Yeah. And I, I'm going out and seeing them when they eat lunch. Mm -hmm. I don't eat, but I just sit there and talk with them. And uh, I guess my mom has a friend who's about her age, and her, I guess, um, is there, she's talking about her grandkids mm -hmm. and how like she's kind of being like a helicopter grandma, where mm -hmm. he, she like wants to like do everything with her her grandkids. Mm -hmm. And but but the thing is, she lives by her, by herself, mm -hmm. and she 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 really is lonely, right. but. You know, it's like you know, your those those kids are those grandkids are not gonna enjoy grandma being around all the time. True. I mean, they're hitting the age now where they're they're getting older and they they don't want grandma around all the time. Right. So. Although there's a guy online, his name's Ross Smith. Have you seen his web page? No. His, no. He's on Instagram and uh, all this stuff with his grandma, who's nearly 100. And he just does all kinds of bizarre, fun stuff with her. And they've made a whole channel about it. So it's well, kind of funny. I, and he's in yeah, his I mean, mid-20s, I think. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, yeah. I, I would say, you know, it, it's def but it's definite. The thing about her, and her name's Debbie. Yeah. The thing about Debbie is that she she's very lonely yeah and she she exudes lonely loneliness right and so it'd be one thing if you know if if you know the grandmother if debbie was outgoing energetic but just loved being around her grandkids and right. the grandkids love being around her right then that's a whole different story right. but it's almost like she will go and her grandkids are like she has two daughters and they are on totally different directions yeah. and they're both each an hour away so there are two hours so it's one one way it's an hour and then the other way it's an hour so it's like it's just, so she goes back and forth and it's like i mean i think i think it kind of it kind of exudes a little uh neediness yeah. No, nobody well, wants. Once they turn into teenagers, they won't want us to hang out with grandma or exactly or even parents. Well, that well, that's the thing is the 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 the, the grandkids are are hitting that age. Right. They're already teenagers, and yeah. they. I mean, I I don't I I don't know if her daughters are just being nice and saying you know no we don't want you to come because you know they oh. have this and that so it's. It's it's very hard, especially especially when you're when you live by yourself, right? And you, I mean, your family's in different directions. So I I, I go I feel for her. Yeah. As a, but I mean, there's no there's no answer. There's no good no. answer. No, just find some other interests and then get busy doing those things. Well, that's what my mom's saying. You know, she's like, you know, the thing is, Debbie is at home all day every yeah. day pretty much and wow. she's like she keeps on at telling debbie why don't you go get a part-time job yeah this is what older people do they go out and they not not because they need the money yeah. it's more to just do something to be right. you know productive you know and, and i mean i know that i mean i have my interest and i get so much enjoyment just being in the meeting with you and and yeah. my patrons i just i love and i make love making these videos yeah. i mean this is my passion right so you gotta find your passion yeah well before the pandemic i and before i got ms i ran a, a meetup site through meetup.com and it was like welcome to our county and it was just to get people to meet each other. And I told every one of them, it's like, you know, once you hit a certain age, it's hard to meet people that, and find out what you have in common. Because when you're young or when you have young children, you can meet people through school and through the kids. But then once they grow up and you're still working and kind of stuff, you, you need to meet people, especially because I was new to the area and I didn't know a lot of people that were my own age other than people in real estate or mortgages and all that. It's like, I don't want to talk about real estate 24 seven. I want some normal friends to talk about other things. So yeah. that's when I started the group and it did a lot of um, people my age and older. I even had like 70 and 80 year old people joining and we would get together for coffee and stuff. And it, we have I've kept in touch with a lot of them even through the pandemic to today. One of them emailed me yesterday, in fact, 
He lives up in White Rock. He's probably 75, 76 years old, and he's a widower. So we did attract a lot of people that uh, needed an outlet. You know, their grandkids are grown up or they don't have any children or grandkids kind of thing. So yeah, it's neat to meet people and figure out other interests other than your kids and your grandkids. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And we would even, because a lot of them had pets, we would do pet walks and stuff like that, which I haven't been able to do since I got MS, but we did used to do those things. And it was fun. And then that meetup site had all kinds of other interests. You know, if you wanted to be in a book club or wine club or, you know, just a group of people that like to go out to dinner every week, you know, those were groups you could find through that. So she might want to look into that. I don't know if meetup's still going. I haven't checked into it lately, but that's where you can find a ton of other interests. There were groups of people that are in all those interests. Well, I would say I, I, I'm liking how this is taking shape. Yeah. Now that I have you two, and I, 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 I guess I have two new, uh, they're, they're trying me out. I mean, I sent them emails, but uh, they, haven't, they haven't joined and they haven't said anything. So I don't know if they're going to, you know, just trying it out and they're going to quit or whatever. But I hope I can get this together because I really, I really feel that, you know, for MS especially, especially when it comes to loneliness and stuff, I think, I think it's really important for us to have, yeah. you know, especially, especially when, you know, if, if anyone has any questions about MS, yeah. you know, we can talk about it and say, oh yeah, I've had this problem or I have had that problem yeah. or how do you deal with this? Yeah. So, oh. yeah, going back to my meetup group, I did have a lady who moved to Washington because she had MS and she had originally lived in Oklahoma. And I remember meeting her, and but then eventually they didn't like the winters here and they moved back to Oklahoma. So, the winters here in MS at the time, winters here in what? Huh? In uh, yeah compared to Oklahoma, you yeah. know, so what, she liked the the snowstorms and everything they get in I winter don't, there? Yeah, it's, I, don't, I don't know if they couldn't afford it here for real. And oh, it's okay. It's expensive and the, just the winter did them in with the gloomy gray air uh, weather. I, I understand that. I yeah, understand it's that. It's so dark here in the winter. It even gets to me. We've been here almost 10, well, we have been here 10 years and the dark gloomy winters just get to me every year. And it, worse it's every year. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You just crave sunlight. It's like, oh, yeah. You no, know, can't take That's another gloomy kind of day where you only have four hours of barely any light. So, yeah. What are you gonna say, Todd? Well, that's kind of the way it is in Michigan. It's mm -hmm. it's it's a lot cloudier, so you don't get much much sunlight, and mm -hmm. and the days are short. And yeah. Yeah. I'm guessing it's a different different in Washington, but yeah, Michigan is similar. Yeah. You can't, can't wait we last, spring. We last lived in Las Vegas where you hardly ever had a gloomy day. So it was just yeah. bright sunshine all the time and then occasionally it would rain and then you had to buy windshield wipers because they were <laughs> burned up by the sun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I, I we're definitely in, in the rainy season now. Yeah. Oh, man, we uh we we're, we're we're having like rain almost every night now. Yeah, we're still having all sunshine. So. Yeah, well, you know, it, it, it's just sunny during the day, but it, I mean, even now it's what noon, and I'm I'm already starting to see clouds starting to build in, in the in the distance. Mm -hmm. Like they're slowly starting to build. And last night we had we had some we had a good rain last night. Did you? To the point where we oh, I lost my power. We lost our power here. Oh wow. And and uh so and so like I went to bed last night with no power. Oh my god. And and of course the battery backup to my computer it was going i i can't turn it off for some reason yeah. uh so it was chirping mm. like every minute it would be like chirp and it was yeah. like i'm trying to fall asleep and it's a chirp you know? yeah. so it, that was annoying but yeah it was probably but, letting you know the power's out and yeah. i need well that's what it is 
That's what it's doing. But it's like, okay, I understand the power's out. How do you turn off? <laughs> yeah. Well, that can be annoying. So have, have either of you heard of Dr. Gretchen Hart Holly, physical no. therapist? No. No. Um, well, she's a physical therapist that um, specializes in MS. She only she only does um, patients with M MS, and she's got a podcast and lots of YouTube videos. and And I I've only kind of watched her from the outside, not not really paying a whole lot of attention to what she does. But what I've seen, I did like and stuff. And she's got a a new book out called The uh, Missing MS missing link yeah and um anyways she in the book it's like she really connects and really approaches ms different than than um than traditional well, i've done a lot of different physical therapy and, and she she approaches it quite a bit differently um her big her big thing is neuroplasticity right um and um it's like she one of the chapters just really hit me with um it's like i for years i've done a lot of pt and yoga and and been doing the weightlifting now with with steve and um the she she points out that with ms you it, it may not you may be getting stronger but it may not translate into walking better or or one thing or another and so she her big thing is is doing a lot of functional functional stuff so um i'm doing a lot of um uh, she calls it silly walking but basically exaggerated walking correctly um, very slow very exaggerated but but and and doing marching um at my walker and it's like that over the last week has made quite a bit of difference for me that's awesome yeah i was i was surprised and really glad i came across um her, her and her book yeah and her name's gretchen what's her last name holly h-a-w-l-e-y -E okay yeah she's she's very good and yeah. and her book references it's like well if you need more details she's got various podcasts that the books book references to to look at specific exercises and and so forth Neat. so yeah it is yeah i'll check her out yeah. steve's thinking uh yeah I'm, I'm just thinking about like uh i i, I, I kind of want to talk about uh the, the my nascent iodine that I picked up this past week, but I don't know. I didn't want to to to. I, I was kind of wanted to let Todd finish his thought about this thing, and I, so I didn't want to just say, "Okay, Todd, that's enough." No, let's talk about my thing. Yeah. So, but no, no, I I I I, tr I switched to nascent iodine. I, you know, I've been I I've been a big from of glucose iodine. Right, yeah. And and but now I've switched to using nascent iodine and I'm I'm actually I, I I noticed a noticeable difference this past week. A, a noticeable jump. Yeah. And I know it's because and and I I don't know because obviously I I don't have an MRI yet. Mm -hmm. But um I'm just I'm anxious because uh my next uh, neurologist appointment is the 9th of August mm -hmm. 9th of August um, so it, it um, so I don't know if she's, she's going to order a new MRI or not because uh, I just had an MRI this past November so it, it it's it would be like nine months but I, I'm really interested to see where I am. Yeah. Because I I just feel like things are, it's like a steamroller, you know. It's like it's like gaining speed, 
Like, you know, it starts out slowly, but then once you get, once, once the ball starts rolling, it speeds up more and more. And that's kind of, that's kind of what I feel like right now. Yeah, that's good. I, mm. I told you when you mentioned it last week to me that I had kind of switched to the nascent iodine as well, but basically based on price when I was deciding to reorder. So I've been on it for about a month myself. I, th I think it. I think it's better. I think. I think it's. I mean, I'm really diving into everything. It, 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 it not. Not. It's not too much different. Yeah. But the, they the, look almost the, identical when you're looking at the ingredients and everything. Well, that's the thing. But the thing is, is that it's uh, uh, Lugo's iodine is is elemental iodine, or as nascent iodine is atomic iodine, and that doesn't sound doesn't sound like anything. But what it is, is, is to make it up more absorbability, more, increase the, the, the more, uh, more ability for it to be absorbed by the body. It's, right. it's, uh, uh, it's combined with uh, uh, potassium. Right. Uh, so it- Lugol's too? What? Lugol's has potassium too, doesn't it? No, no, that's what I'm saying. Potassium, that, that's Lugol's. No. I don't know, I don't think uh, nascent iodine is, is, is combined with anything. That's the thing. I think that's the difference, yeah. is, is, is between elemental and uh, atomic iodine. The two, I don't know what, I, I, I can't get a clear answer on that, but in the end, it's, it's you absorb more iodine. Right. For, and and you know so people were like because if you ever look at, and I read this article on on some website and they said well you know Lugol is better because if you look at the ingredients it's it's uh it's measured in milligrams right. whereas uh, uh nascent iodine is measured in micrograms mm -hmm. so milligrams much more than. Uh, the micrograms. So, so that, that means that Lugo is better. Well, what I have found out is that um, when you when you when you do when you combine uh, the iodine in Lugo's with potassium, mm -hmm. that's that extra stuff, and that's why you are. That's why you're you're taking a lot more, but you're not absorbing as much. Right. Yeah, because the Lugals, you take four drops, and with the nation, you only take three, and it's clear. I, yeah, yeah, it's clear, yeah. So whatever makes no, no, Lugals no, orange, there's some no, ingredient that makes it an amber color. No, no, I don't know what, the, I don't know why there are different colors, but no, the, the nation I have, is the same color. It's oh, that it? orange. It's, 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 yeah, it's the same color. But well, it's uh, clear. It, yeah, but I well, that's the thing. I, I've seen other nascent iodines that are clear, so yeah. I don't know why mine is that color. But oh, uh, but it says take three drops, not right. and I I I have always said, and I'm I'm tired of probably quoting on it because I, I promote it on all my videos. Yeah. Take four drops of Lugo's iodine, yeah. but I, I I think I think I think I'm I'm glad I'm switched. Yeah. Now I have a whole bunch of Lugol's just sitting, not being used. But yeah. I don't know. I don't. I don't want to go back to it. Yeah. Yeah. I have about yeah. a quarter of a bottle of the uh, Lugol's left when I switch. Yeah. 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 I'm just about out of Lugol's, so I'll I'll give it a try. Yeah. Yeah. I I would recommend switching to nascent and yeah. see what you feel. Yeah, and it's slightly less expensive too. It is. Yeah, when I ordered it, it was. Of course, things okay. are really up and down all the time now, so you never know what the price of anything is lately. I, I, I yeah, I always thought uh, Lugos was more was was the cheapest one on the market, but no, I don't know, I yeah, don't know. I had to buy a new bottle at my mom's house when I went to her house last summer, and because I didn't want to carry my new bottle in my luggage, so she ordered one, and it was at her house, but it was pretty pricey, still. Oh, okay. No, I still and have. I, I still have that in Tennessee because I didn't bring it back here. So, Angela, have you noticed the difference? Not, not measurable. I don't think. I just notice I feel a lot better and I walk a lot better. 
Oh, wow. So, yeah. So that's, that's but I you. haven't had an MRI, so I don't know if, you know, if everything's still calm, that, uneventful. That's, that's the big thing. That's the big thing, is that you don't know. This is a big, like, we don't know. <laughs> I mean, the biggest thing is when you get the MRI. That's that's the big, like, okay, this is where your, your, your brain's at. Exactly. But, uh, without it i mean that's why i'm i'm going more towards just like how do you feel right. i mean in the end that that's the most important thing yeah is how do you feel yeah, i mean now, now that you know i i used to years ago i used to worry like oh i wonder what's going on in my brain but then i was walking around was still with with my walker and i was like well obviously i'm not i'm not <laughs> i'm not better i mean I, I was just sitting there like, well, maybe the MRI would say I'm getting better, but I was still walking around the cane. So, so you can't you can't go on just what the MRI says. Right. It's it's a combination of both, how you feel and the MRI. Yeah. No, my but walking's you, been improving since last July when I got back home from Tennessee, because I was yeah. still in the walker going through the airports kind of thing, and but when I got home and continued with my regimen it just gradually gets better and better so and that and that's the big thing that's that's the biggest thing that i mean i wish it, more people would know is that it's not a go to sleep with ms and then you wake up with no ms right. i mean it's slow and gradual and this it takes time right and so it was, was slow and gradual enough i didn't even notice it was happening for years until yeah. finally I got a symptom that you noticed there's no denying. So yeah, it's yeah, yeah. slow progressing and regressing kind of thing. Yeah. But I, what Tom? Well, I was gonna say, I think I told you last time that I had kind of a hiccup and, and went backwards with the physical therapy I was doing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, it's like finally a month later or or six weeks later or something it's like i'm back to feeling good and and into a, a good routine again with the weightlifting and everything else and mm -hmm. and um so the the biggest thing i've noticed lately is it's it doesn't happen consistently but i have to go up and down the stairs once a day and it's like going up the stairs i was able to somewhat normally um bring my bring my leg up versus versus having to swing it hard or or whatever else and it's like that hasn't happened every time but it's like a couple of times it's it's been um there where where i'm kind of doing it normal so nice so yeah it is it is a little thing little things yeah. here and there exactly just gotta keep plugging along and, and I can tell you, I'm leading the way, I guess, because I've been doing this a lot longer than both of you, but I can guarantee you, it gets better. I mean, now it's to the point where I'm walking around, I don't even think about walking. Yeah. I just walk. Right. And, and I mean, Sometimes I'm a little wobbly if I've sat for too long, and I just have to stand and get my balance, and then I, I can walk okay and not have to reach for the walls anymore. <laughs> that that's true that's true i i do when i when i stand up i have to i have to pause for a sec just i don't know what it is just to get yourself i maybe get your blood running up to your brain or something but yeah yeah there's a moment where you have to stand and just say okay and just get yourself set and then go you find your center and then walk yeah, I mean, I, if, if, if I just got up really quick and started walking, I'd probably land on the floor, but... Yeah, you do a face plant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but it feels nice to walk more normal after being unable to hardly walk at all without assistance, so... Yeah. Definitely yeah. appreciated to be able to do that. I mean, I... I, I, I think I was responding to a comment that someone uh, left on my channel and I I and I commented that you know pronounced 
against all the objections to all my family members in my house, mm -hmm. I just I I felt like I was ready to let go of the uh, get let go of the walker mm -hmm. and start walking, you know, around the house, just taking a few steps. Yeah, and you know, but 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 man, that was such a relief when I started doing that. I was like, oh, this looks, this is so amazing. I never mm -hmm. thought. I would get to that point. I know. Yeah. yeah, it was nice to let that go. It's still in our spare bedroom, but I'm not using it. I haven't used it for months. I still, I still have a cane. I when I go to like uh, out. Uh, yeah. Because I don't know what, uh, because sometimes there's some hilly areas where it's like, you don't know if, if you're going to encounter, I mean, I could probably handle it, but I don't want to chance it because right. I don't want to fall. Exactly. And like cut myself or something. Right. So I, I just take my cane. That's, it's just, it, it, out in public, it's fine. You just walk around with a cane. It's not that much. I mean, but, but to finally give up the the, the walker, the full on walker. Yeah. That was that was that was a wonderful feeling. Yeah. And getting and, and not using the the, the 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 chair. That was. Oh man, that was such a relief. What your scooter chair? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I take my I still take my scooter chair out in the morning with my with my mom when we go uh, on the walk because uh, Nico likes to run, and I I am not going to be running anytime soon. I mean, I, I'm not going to say maybe ten years from now I might run, maybe who knows? I don't know, but right now I'm I'm not planning on running. No. But I can walk. But Nico doesn't want to. Nico doesn't want to walk. He wants to run. So yeah. I, I get on my scooter and I run down the street. And yeah. he's a little ball of energy. Oh yeah, yeah. We got a golf cart recently, and we take the dog out on a golf cart ride, and he really loves it now. <laughs> <laughs> but we go to the little parks in our neighborhood, and then he can get out and walk with either my son or my husband. So. Yeah, we, we've got a golf cart too, and and pretty much daily, I'll, I'll take my take him out on the on our trails, and it's like he just loves it. Yeah, yeah. We had a little dog in Vegas, and we had a golf cart there too, and he would outrun the golf cart. You couldn't even <laughs> catch him. It's like I don't want to go this fast, and he's just booking it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He didn't want to ride in it. He wanted to run with it. Yeah. <laughs> But Bentley likes to hang on the side and air surf with his paw. So <laughs> funny. He's like he's like a little kid. He is, yeah. You know how little kids the they stick their arm out and they do this like whoop. Yeah. Yeah, you see him doing his paw and with the wind. It's so cute. So. And then the once my son got his friend, they were gonna go down to the golf course and they took off and Bentley was in the house watching him and he let out a scream like he was devastated that they left without him. <laughs> it's like you're stealing my car. <laughs> it was funny. It's amazing how fast they get used to stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, that's true. They adapt really quick. Yeah. And then once you take it away, they're like, where to go? I, I want it back. Exactly. Bring it back. Yeah. I know like, he watches right. the window now. If he sees my husband and my son take off in the golf cart, he just mopes. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I wanted to go. So, <laughs> it's cute. So we take him as much as we can just down to the little, we have a sunset park where you can watch the sunset over the San Juan Islands. And then we have the um, Sand Dollar Park where you see the sunrise over Mount Baker. So it's kind of nice. That, that's a, you live in a beautiful area. Yeah, nice. it's really pretty in the summer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What were you saying, Todd? Oh, just that sounds wonderful. That, oh, yeah. The, the sheer beauty of what you got going there. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm telling you, I remember because. Uh, Crocker, he what he uh, he he was trained at in uh, Anacortes, so that's yeah, south really of you. Beautiful. Yeah. South of you, but I mean that whole, I would say like once you get out of this the the sea the Seattle area, yeah, and North Seattle area, yeah, once you get up in that area, like 
and of course up to you up to vancouver right beautiful area beautiful area it is it's really pretty especially in the summertime so and we're not getting the heat like everywhere else is it's staying really mild we haven't even had to run our portable air conditioners yet this year oh really wow yeah. Yeah, and I've been surprised at that because even I have to, if my feet get cold, they cramp. So I keep a little foot warming. It's like a heating pad, but you can stick your feet in it. And I just lay it on top of the end of my bed. And I've actually had to turn it on most nights, even here in July. Really? It's so cool. Wow. At night. Yeah, we're been in the 50s at night. And it was even Monday, I had to put a hoodie on because it was pretty chilly that morning. Oh. Huh. And then like my friend in Atlanta is sweating to death and going, oh my God, turn the heat down. <laughs> so Yeah, it's, a, it's 106 today. Wow. Right now. Right. So yeah. I, I had the air conditioner running. Oh yeah. Well, not, Vegas, not, we always had the AC on. Yeah, it's it's not it's not it's not like you you got a cool your room or something. It, the, the house is just you you yeah you set it to, and the air and the AC is going yeah, but I mean I remember when the power went out last night when the power went out and there was no power yeah, I mean, of course the air and everything it went off and so I mean. That, that was like, but even at six and seven, it was still like in the 90s probably, but I, I was all right. Yeah. Which is a surprise. I didn't even think about it until I talked to my mom this morning. And she's like, yeah, it was, it, were you or were you able to fall asleep last night? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, oh man, it was, it was so warm. I was like, oh, I, I, I didn't feel like that. Yeah. Which is a surprise because I'm, with the MS, you know, heat is the most, you're the most sensitive to the heat, but it was no problem. So it was another sign that things are in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I noticed when I went to Tennessee last summer, the heat didn't affect me very much. So my heat sensitivity was really strong when I first got diagnosed, but now it's not so much at all. What's the temperature over where you are, Todd? What's that? What What's the temperature where you are? Um, it's been hotter lately, so between 80s and 90s. Wow, we're at 70 degrees right now. Wow. Well, 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 I know. Where you're... I love I love 70. Yeah. I know. When I first got diagnosed, I went to Google. I'm like, what's the best place to live in the United States for when you have MS? <laughs> And of course, it said Washington State, and I was like, "Oh." <laughs> so. No, I I would disagree with that. I would yeah. disagree with that yeah. because besides, like right now, where this is the rainy season here in right. in Tucson, I would say the Southwest is probably the best because right. yeah, it gets hotter, but it's the humidity that really kills. Yeah. Well, and I've often thought maybe because I spent nine years in Las Vegas with all that sunshine in the southern part of the country, maybe that helped my MS that I didn't even know I had. Because they think yeah. I may have even started having it back when I was about 25. So. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't doubt it. I yeah. would not doubt it. That and having a baby probably helped me keep myself. Well, have, having a baby that, that, yeah, get, having a baby that c cuts all your MS symptoms. Right. Yeah. So but, that may have put me on a different trajectory with it. And then it wasn't until I got here that I had an eye doctor tell me that he suspected it. And I thought he was crazy. So I never followed up on it until several years later when I got another, the symptom of my hand going numb. I'm, su I'm surprised they said that Washington was the best state to live yeah. with MS. Yeah, if you do Google, that's what it'll tell you. And it's like, but yet we're the number one state that has MS. That, I was just going to say that. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Crazy. I like your theory. Go to the southern, you know, get below where Atlanta is, you know. Uh, I, 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 I wouldn't I would say go to the southeast because that I remember uh, when we I've only been down to um, uh, out, my mom and I and my dad we, the three of us we took a trip to New Orleans just to see oh, what New Orleans, Orleans was 
Yeah. But it, it, I, and so that's my impression I, of the Southeast. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. And maybe there, someone, someone from the Southeast should be like, you have the wrong impression. Because my, my only taste was New Orleans. But yeah. it was so gross. Yeah. Muggy, muggy, muggy. Yeah. But, but, but it come out to the West, like, you know, Arizona, New Mexico, mm -hmm. uh, probably a little bit of Texas. I, I, I would probably think that the dry air is probably the best. Yeah. Yeah. And that really, get more sunshine. Yeah, you get sunshine and you don't have, and, and the thing is, is especially in, in, uh, where I am in Tucson. I mean, any place you go, every restaurant, every store, every place, everything is air conditioned. Right. Not one, there, there's not a one place where you go, unless you're standing outside. Right. But, but yeah, it was the same but, in Las Vegas. Yeah. It was funny, I was a real estate agent there too. And I remember when I was pregnant with my son, I went and showed this one house and they had air conditioning, but they didn't believe in using it. And they're trying to sell the house. So I had to show the house to these people and there was no air conditioning, just some fans on. And I nearly died. I'm like, I told my clients at the time, I said, this gives a whole new meaning to bun in the oven. I'm gonna have to go get in my car because I am overheating drastically. So yeah, I couldn't believe they wouldn't use their air conditioning while they're trying to sell their house. Right, yeah. It was no. insane, yeah. Some people get it in their head, though. So, what do you have? Do either one of you have any symptoms that you've not told me about yet? Not that I can think of. Just lately with my shoulder, but I think that might be a menopausal type thing. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't. I don't know. But I, yeah. from what I get, from what I hear, I don't think that menopause cause like shoulder pain. No, it can. Ma yeah. Oh, because, really? Yeah, it can. Oh, okay. It can cause joint pain for women. You wake okay. up and your shoulder feels locked. That is a symptom. So, yeah. Okay. Unfortunately. I think that's why maybe we have so many men reincarnating in, on planet Earth because nobody wants to be a woman. <laughs> it's not very easy, let me tell you. <laughs> reincarnating, really? Uh, yep. Oh, yep. I, I didn't know anyone was reincarnated. We're all reincarnating. <laughs> oh, okay. Yep. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I I didn't get the memo. I don't know. <laughs> yep. No. It's funny. Yeah, no, I've I've enjoyed your videos over time because it's like all all of your symptoms get I just kind of check like oh yeah I've got that oh yeah I've got that oh yeah I've got that and, yeah. and so I guess it's it's reassuring to to hear other people that have have got similar things going on. Yeah. 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 Well, that's yeah. that's my goal. Solutions. Yeah, and I mean, I, I know all my symptoms. The good thing is that I this this is why I started my channel is because I know it works because I I I mean, and you name it, it's gone now. Yeah. I mean, I I remember 15 years ago. I I for instance, I could not have ever imagined I would ever be able to sleep the entire night and because I, I would constantly wake up having to go to the bathroom or something else like you know I'd have cramps in my leg or something but now it's like I mean it's it's all gone yeah I mean it's just I don't know and so that's why I'm here to help people so. I'm still working on the waking up in the night. It's getting better, but it still still interrupts my sleep. That's for sure. How how's your water intake? It's normal. I mean, I drink most of it in the morning till yeah. the afternoon, and then taper it off only to take my last uh, pill at night. Yeah. Because so, I take one capsule of the LDN at night. So. Okay. Yeah. 
And I try to take it with as little water as possible. <laughs> <laughs> How's your sleep, Todd? I'm generally good. It's like I, it's, I sleep through the night without a whole lot of problems. It's like generally getting, I don't know, seven and a half to eight hours of sleep. Um, and Apple Watch measures your core as your your um, baseline sleep. And then um, it's like my REM and deep sleep varies quite a bit. And it's like those, those aren't nearly where I'd like them to be because that's where you get healing and stuff going on. But, um, but generally pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm hoping to even get back into a better bedtime routine now that my husband will be going back to work. He'll have to go to bed a lot earlier. So, and him well, being up this whole year, he's been staying up late, which keeps me awake late. What's his normal, what's his normal routine? Wake up? Normally he gets up about 5 a.m. and then works till, till late. And then usually he goes to bed by 8.30 or 9 o'clock. Okay. Yeah, so we can get back into that routine that'll help me probably a lot yeah one of the one things that i i'm tweaking the my water intake and it's like normal i i have gone so like by four o'clock I'm, I'm pretty much done drinking and it's like well i i'm still getting up maybe two or three times a night to, mm -hmm. to go to the bathroom. And um, now I've gotten so that I drink into the evening and really it doesn't I, it doesn't affect that, the number of times I need to get up. And like last night, I think it was just once or I'm, I'm down to once or twice. And I wow. earlier was, was like up to four times a night. Mm -hmm. So seems yeah, like it's I, a control for me. Yeah, my max was four times a night. Now it's down to three and sometimes two. Yeah. Which is better, but it needs to get even better than that. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you should, you, you should really embrace the waking up, drinking all your water, and then the rest of your day, you're just not drinking anything, except for, of course, for your, for your medication. Right. But, I mean, it, I, I was surprised how well it worked for me. Yeah. So you pretty much sleep through the night without getting up? Yeah, yeah. Great. Well, okay. you should check out, uh, I made a video on it on, uh, I'm on Patreon. Just, mm -hmm. just go through my videos, and one of them is is about how I uh, how I pretty much drink all my stuff in the morning, mm -hmm. and then I'm done. Yeah. And yeah, and, and for the longest time, I always thought that can't be a good thing to do. We say we say, oh, you got to drink water throughout the day. Yeah. But so I tried it one time, just just drinking in the morning and I was like, and then I went on, I mean, just like for instance, right now, I haven't drunk since, what time is it? Uh, oh. I would say I, I haven't drunk for, well, you know, I get up crazy early. So I haven't drunk since four o'clock this morning. Mm -hmm. So that's what, nine hours? Yeah. And I'm gonna go, until I go to sleep tonight, and I'm gonna, I know I'm gonna, I'm gonna drink at an hour before I go to bed. I'm gonna drink my all my night supplements with with just a little bit of water, and then as I go to bed, I'm gonna take my melatonin with a little bit of water. Yeah. But no more like drinking anything for a large amount, yeah. and I am just surprised how how I, how, like, I, I guess that they say drink throughout the day so you don't get dehydrated, but when it comes down to it is, is if you have a set amount, you know your set amount mm -hmm. that you should drink. If you drink all that in the morning, you don't need to drink for the rest of the day. If, if you drink more than that, that actually is a major hindrance 
mm-hmm. and it could aff- negatively affect your your sleep and everything like that. So that's why, like, I I, I pin down. I need 125 ounces of water yeah. a day. It, with that, that includes all my activity levels and everything. Mm-hmm. If I drink that all in the morning, and then I go through the day, and then I'm I'm fine for the rest of the day. I don't even think about drinking anything until the next morning. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's good. Yeah, I might like give it. I might give it. Yeah, try it out, Todd. Tell me what you think. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, you might, it might take a little while to adapt, just you know, maybe a week, yeah, or maybe not. I, I sure as hell didn't um, adapt. I, I did. I just was like, because I like to be a guinea pig to myself. <laughs> I like to d- just take a chance sometimes. Yeah. I was like, you know, let me see what happens if I just do this. Yeah. And I did it. I was like, wow. And then it really opened my eyes. And so I did it again and did it again. And I was just like, oh, man, I'm not waking up at all to go to the bathroom at night. And I, now I've been doing this for what, two months now? And I, out of all those nights, I might have gotten up maybe once or twice. Mm-hmm. And that was it. Yeah. No, that's good. Wow. That's very good. Finding new ways to inspire us. Yeah. Hey, yes. And I, I, I am, I'm gonna be, and you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put up this video. Yeah. To my regular YouTube channel, if you guys don't mind. Okay. What, this my one talk, in its entirety? Yeah. Okay. Just, just, just to get people, because I, as I said, you know, I really want people to know they're not alone. And if they really want someone to talk about their MS, yeah. specific and not just like okay this is what i read yeah this it's more like okay this is what we're going through and this is what we're experiencing you know yeah. we're, we're a little ms social group yeah <laughs> true so do you mind todd if i do that um no that'd be fine yeah okay i mean i, I I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I caught you, Todd, if you didn't have time to put on makeup or not, but. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Angel. I know you wanted to get your 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 background with the sunset on it. True. So you just have a a, what a filing cabinet and and a uh, and a, and a, a closet and that's yeah. so boring i know my office is a little boring <laughs> <laughs> well i do you guys have anything more to say not today no no yeah, yeah okay well it was it's always a pleasure to talk to both of you i yeah. i hope I mean, I have two people, two more people trying out out my Patreon, and maybe you know, maybe they're, maybe they just will, over time they'll catch on. Like, oh, okay, you know, there's a Zoom chat. You know, maybe they just are not ready to do it yet. But I, I, I'm appreciative of both of you. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. And thanks well, thank for sharing you. that new information, Todd. I'll check that out later. Yeah, yeah, she's really good. Yeah. See what kind of exercises she has, too. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Cool. All well, right, guys. Here. Have a good rest of your day. You too. Yeah, you too. Bye, Take guys. Care. Bye. Bye-bye. See ya.